Hey, this is AC Branch here, and I'm sitting at uh, HWF headquarters doing an uh, interview for Project Nova. I'm sitting here with King of Corruption, the chairman of the HWF. Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to thank you for taking time on your busy schedule to do this interview with My us. My pleasure. So, King, how's life outside of the wrestling world for you? Uh, actually, as a matter of fact, life outside of the wrestling world is doing quite well for me. I, I've got to admit I'm making more money now than I ever have, and um, that gives me a uh, wonderful opportunity to be able to dedicate more time and effort into the H-Town Wrestling Federation. Well, I hear that your family has a few generations of wrestling history behind them. Can you explain on that? That's right. Uh, the Rollinson family, actually, uh, their history in the business dates back pretty far. Uh, back in the 80s, uh, my cousin was the first individual from our family to get into the business. Uh, he wrestled for a little while, and then uh, not so uh, long ago, my other cousin, who many of you are familiar with, Brian Robinson uh, from the KWA, he uh, got into the business, and uh, along with him, two of my uncles and an aunt. So uh, I believe that's uh, four people uh, spanning across two generations in the Robinson family that are in the business. Well, speaking of the KWA, that is run by your family, correct? That's right. Can you explain on how this federation is run? The KWA actually spans back uh, quite a long time. It's uh, it's quite possibly one of the oldest backyard wrestling federations in uh, in the entire country, and uh, dating all the way back into the, the 80s, and maybe even further than that. It's run by my cousin Brian Robinson, who, uh, and quite honestly, I think he's done a great job. Brian Robinson has showed me quite a few uh, things. Uh, he's he's been quite a mentor to me, and. Uh, the KWA is also, it's, it's helped out, or he gets help by running it with uh, Denny Robinson, my uncle, who's also uh, one of the workers in the pro business, uh, Ed Robinson, who is another cousin of mine, and uh, several others that are in the family. So yeah, it's a, it's a close-knit, tight, family-run business. Well, what inspired you to start your own federation? What inspired me? What had happened was, uh, I believe it was back in 97, um, my father, billionaire Frank, had made a trip down to Kentucky, and he uh, returned, and he had several video tapes in his possession that they had sent with him. Uh, the video tapes were a KWA show. Some of them were big events. Some of them were uh, minor jobber type shows. And uh, when I when I watched them, uh, I was completely hooked. Actually, I, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to get into that business. I wanted to do the backyard wrestling, and I wanted to put on shows and. Uh, even kind of build up a competitive drive to uh, outdo Brian Robinson. So is, is it true that HWF has been running for four years? HWF uh, has been running quite a while now. Um, immediately, almost immediately after organized corruption uh, showed up at Doomsday 2000, we returned here. Uh, we had won two of their titles, the KWA Intercontinental Championship and the KWA Junior Heavyweight Championship. And uh, when, when we came back to H-Town from Kentucky from the Doomsday Show, that that was when I was completely convinced. I, I'm ready. I'm ready to start this federation up. I'm ready to start doing title defenses, and I'm ready to see what this town, what Hamilton has got to offer me as far as talent, providing talent. And therefore, we at first we started the organized corruption wrestling. Um, it wasn't really an official fed. It was just a, actually just shows that we were doing, which evolved into um, H-Town Wrestling Federation just a few weeks after that. Uh, which was headed by Billionaire Frank at the time. What's it like owning such a stable federation? It's actually not easy. We've had our problems. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, downsides to, to running a federation uh, and, and being the guy who's really pretty much uh, been with it the whole time and, and running it and uh, taking care of managing shows and so forth, it, it gets depressing at times. Uh, there's been a few occasions where I have uh, taken an absence from the wrestling where I had gotten tired of it, but uh, every time I do that, I end up coming back. I, I can't stay away from it for a long period of time. Now, how did you meet with us at the CWO? CWO, um, I believe the first time that I ever became uh, familiar with the CWO, I, I had heard rumors of them. There were several friends of mine uh, who were, were also wrestling fans who had told me, you should, you should uh, connect with these guys. and. and try to do some work with them and see what happens. The CWO, I remember one time in particular, I was surfing on the internet, and I noticed that the CWO, uh, the CWO owner had uh, left a message in one of the message boards of another backyard federation. I emailed him the minute I found out that he was from uh, Hamilton. 
I'm not sure if I quite got a response then, but later on, it wasn't much longer after that, much later after that, that I ended up meeting with CW owner in person and um, seeing that we shared quite a few common interests and, and decided to start working. And since then, we've uh, off and on been doing uh, different shows. And well, what are your thoughts on how CW was ran? I think that one very important thing when keeping in mind that you're going to run a wrestling federation is, is that you're going to have to be dedicated. I've seen so many guys come into this business and leave this business and, 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 and they want me to hand them the world as far as wrestling is concerned and I just don't think they deserve it because uh, they don't have the dedication. You have to have that drive. There's one thing about wrestling, whether it be on the pro level or on the backyard level, you have to be in love with it. In love with it enough to endure the pains and to endure the, the, the emotional distress that it gives you. And that's one thing I can say about CWO is, is the guy running that federation is uh, definitely, I believe, uh, has, a lot, has endured a lot and um, has gone through a lot and has still stuck with it and showed that uh, he has the dedication that is required to run that federation. So I've heard stories that you have competed with the CWO. Uh, can you explain on that? The, yeah, I have competed with the CWO. When I first met up with them, I, uh, it was close around the time that had Vince McMahon had bought the WCW out. Um, I had seen how well that the, the, the war was going between WCW and WWF had flourished and how they had uh, actually helped build up heat. And I got it into my mind, and uh, some of the other wrestlers who were, who were in the HWF with me, uh, helping me book matches and so forth, got it in our minds that, you know, why don't we try something similar with the CWO that um, we have done with the KWA. The only problem, and I, I believe the only reason that these different feuds that we've had with the CWO versus having the KWA, I think that the reason they weren't so successful was because the KWA, you know, it, we're... We're family. Uh, I'm family with the guys down there, and therefore uh, they were. Um, they knew right off the bat it's friendly competition. There have been instances before where we didn't necessarily let CWO know that we had uh, that we were our intentions were friendly competition, and mainly communication gaps. I would have to say, um, and which would lead one one thing would lead to another, and um, eventually you know we would have all out battles and wars that were uh, serious. You know serious. To the extreme, and that's uh, pretty much spanning across our, my history with the CWO. Now, mixed stories have been told upon your operation with the bed. Could you honestly explain how you planned this and did it succeed or fail? What had happened with the operation with the bed situation? Um, I believe this was the year before last year. Uh, we had uh, once again decided to play a practical joke on a CWO show. And it, um, where we had sent one of my wrestlers, CF the Messenger, out. He uh, was wearing, he, he had no shirt on, and he had HWF written all over his, his bare chest, and, and he was screaming HWF, much like a, I don't know, we was trying to have him mimic a fan. Well, that's, that ended up, uh, the CW owner and I had uh, agreed that later on, you know, we'll do a little bit of a brawl. Uh, which would kind of insinuate that we would bring the, the HWF in for a cross-promotional uh, war, very similar to, like I said, the KWA. Um, there was some editing, there was some problems with the editing, and uh, we had a, I, I had a misunderstanding that we were completely wiped out of the show, when in actuality the editing was being saved for uh, uh, future uh, uses. And what I did is I, I planned out a, uh, an attack on them. I, I planned out an attack with water balloons. And um, we, I had ordered all my HWF wrestlers to show up. We said we, we invited the uh, CW owner over to do a show with, uh, uh, at, at the HWF facility. And in the, in, the, in the meantime, while they were doing their show, we ambushed them with water balloons. Uh, made it much like a, an invasion type scenario. And... Um, which was actually really, we, we had planned it for a practical joke. We, you know, that's one thing HWF we've, we've done is, is a lot of practical jokes. Um, but, you know, once again, the communication gap was there. We didn't quite uh, let them know. We didn't tell them beforehand because we was afraid that we, um, that it wouldn't work out, that it wouldn't go according to plan. 
And uh, which, you know, the way we did do it, it, it did go according to plan. Uh, I, I do have to say that uh, the way that we had uh, set it up, the way that we had set to uh, carry this, this operation out, it, it, it went 100% uh, as planned. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that I got the outcome that I wanted out of it, though. What, did you, what was your outtake on the fact that chaos didn't fire back? Did you think it was they were scared or not wanting to stoop to that level? I think that it was, I don't really think that they were scared. I think that they um, thought that what we did was out of place and had no business in the wrestling shows. And um, that it was that they didn't want to stoop to our level. After attacking chaos, you moved on to a federation called ICW. Could you explain how you joined them and how their shows are produced? The, uh, the ICW, I met through a co-worker of mine, uh, the owner, John Wassong. He um, actually got a hold of me one day. He, I invited him to come down and check out the HWF setup, and he did exactly that. My first impression of Wassong was that um, he was a little bit uh, egotistical, uh, had a dollar signs in his eyes and in his, in his mind, and um, wanted to mix professional wrestling too much in the backyard. Um, I, I, and, Despite all that, I still went ahead and agreed to do a couple of shows, which were, we did two of them. Uh, they were supposed to be uh, joint promotional shows, and they actually, uh, they, they were probably the best, two of the best performed shows that we'd ever done, that we'd ever put together with excellent turnouts. Some of the greatest turnouts I'd ever seen that the HWF had ever uh, had. Um, and we had actually quite a good time, despite the, my current thoughts of some of those guys in ICW now, or the former ICW, uh, despite all that, we, we did have an excellent time there. Now, what was your take on when the IC board, ICW board accused you of ruining their November show by taking down posters and trash talking in the guest books? I, um, if I, I don't know, I mean, I don't really remember vividly if I did insinuate that I was going to att attack their November show that, that they were holding at the Spears Gym that that year, but um, if I did, then uh, I, don't, I don't really want to say I apologize. I have nothing to I apologize to ICW for, but um, I think that they, they acted a little bit irrational and, and, and took it a little bit too serious as far as their reactions to what we had written in the guest book. What was your reaction towards ICW's, uh, I guess you could say, stupid act when X broke his collarbone when, and then the owners did not offer to take him to the hospital. Well, for a group of people that claim to be or to, to claim to be professional, I think they acted very childish and very unprofessional. Uh, when, when you're booking a show, one of the biggest things you need to watch out for, and, and I'm constantly, constantly glued to the matches that I'm calling and, and, and staying there watching that are under, you know, that are done under my uh, promotion. I'm you know, constantly seeing and uh, making sure that these guys are not hurt. And if so, then, then I don't have one bit of a problem stopping the action right there. What they did to X was uh, outright ridiculous. He should have been taken to the hospital. They should have been looking out for his well-being. And if they cared anything about him, they would have done exactly that. Now, can I get your personal thoughts and feelings toward John Wysong, the owner of ICW? Well, I had, for the longest time, I had problems with John Wysong. I uh, have said a lot of mean things about him and about his... Uh, his people, his family that have helped him run ICW. Um, what I, um, I am happy to say that back at, at the Universal Clash promotion uh, this past summer, he did show up and uh, he swallowed his pride. He shook it in my hand. He said, "Let's be, let's let bygones be bygones. Let's bury the hatchet." I agreed to do that. Um, I know he still probably has his faults, but I still uh, would like to keep the peace with him. I have no reason really to speak badly of John Weissong now. Now, as we all know, the net wars, or net dramas, you want to call them, have been going on since late 2000 to 2003. What is your opinion about that, and what roles did you play in that? The net wars, actually, uh, there's a lot of times on, on the Internet where I've taken credit for being the, the king of the net wars. Um, going into the different message boards, leaving our, our, um, our messages, uh, uh, you know, our crude messages, to actually put it mildly, um, we, we did uh, kind of uh, pioneer that around uh, in backyard wrestling around, at least around Hamilton. Um, my opinion of it now though is I think that although it was fun for a minute, it, it should be stopped and we should um, actually get down to business and do some real shows and, and, and I think that if everybody would stay alive, 
allied with each other and um, get along, then we could actually put over a lot better shows than what we would if we were uh, fighting amongst each other and making immature comments. Now, after working working with ICW, you hooked back up with with Chaos Wrestling Organization, but this time it was a little different. It was a universal class with 14 plus people attending. Mm -hmm. What was your thoughts about that? I think Universal Clash, just like the ICW shows that we did over North and the Hamilton, uh, were very successful. We had good turnouts. They had some excellent matches that I'd seen out of there. Uh, it was it really it, Universal Clash did one thing if it did anything. It proved that despite what's said on the internet, despite the, the the arguing that goes on between different federations, that we still can get together once we see a potential good show in the making. We can still get together and we can still entertain the fans and entertain them at a, a very high rate. Um, it, it goes to show that I think that every one of us in this town will be better off uh, joining together and, and cooperating and helping each other's co uh, promotions and helping each other's shows. And, and Universal Clash, I think, represents that. Now, what was your thoughts and feelings towards Trillion Dollar when he told Sid and BC to end their match because it was boring and unentertaining? When I first saw Trillion Dollar, there's only one word that came into mind, and that was green. Um, I think that he held the very similar qualities, or well, I don't want to say qualities, but very similar traits that John Wysong held, and the fact that he thought that he was uh, a main event superstar on the caliber where he deserved to face Hulk Hogan and, and have Hulk Hogan job to him. Um, Trillion Dollar is not that. Trillion Dollar has no clue as to how the real business is run. He um, what he did to BC and Sid that night was, I thought, was not right, considering that we are on backyard wrestling. If Trillion Dollar was making money or even losing money because of BC and Sid, then I can understand him saying that, saying what he did to those boys. But he wasn't, and he took it too seriously, and that's the very thing that I actually discourage and try to fight now. Now, what are two of your favorite UC matches, and what are two of your worst well, your least favorite UC matches. Well, I would be a liar if I didn't say that my most favorite UC match would be the three stages of hell match that was for the HWF television title against the dealer and um, or between the natural Roger Lee and the dealer. Those boys worked their butts off in that match. Um, they had went out, they went for uh, weeks and weeks and planned that match out to, to carry it out exactly the way they wanted to. I gave them complete uh, say so on how they were going to do it. And I, I gave them my hats off to that. They did a great job. That was uh, one. Of, that was my most favorite. Um, I'd say my second favorite probably was the very match that Trillion Dollar has something to say about, and that was the BC and Sid ladder match. Those guys are good prospects, um, and and to have guys carry your your main event uh, level matches, it's it's just as important to have guys carry your mid card matches. And I think those guys are excellent at doing so. They did get the fans into it, and it seemed to me like the only person who even had a problem with that one was Trillion. Um, I wasn't very fond, and I'm not trying to, to really beat down on Trillion right now and nitpick at him, but I wasn't very fond of his matches. I think he tried too hard and got uh, not, uh, less far than some of the other wrestlers. Um, and I, you know, I just wasn't very impressed. And I've heard just recently that there have been some professional promoters that aren't very impressed with his work. Um, that, pretty much, I guess, sums up how I feel about the Universal Clash, though. I saw more good than bad come out of it, by far. Now, what are your thoughts towards the Overpeck Wrestling Alliance promotion? Overpeck Wrestling Association is good. I, I like them. I've done everything. I've gone out of my way to help them out and try to help them, get them over and uh, keep people interested in them. However, they don't really... Um, the guy, you know, the OWA owner does an excellent job at running. He just doesn't have the support that he deserves, and that's why I tried to come in and help him out. Um, he's, uh, you know, he would have a great running fit if they would just put a little more effort. If he could just get some guys in there to help him and put a little more effort into the OWA, it would. I think that it would be on such a great caliber as the CWO or the HWF. I, I th I'm really, I, I, I think the OWA has a lot of potential, but they, they have a lot, a long way to go still. Do you feel it was right by having Danny Dreamer make the King job out on his debut and lose just to have one member in return carry him out? I, uh, well, let the record show, I don't have a problem do jobbing a Danny Dreamer. Although I'm not a wrestler, I, I do, uh, you know, if, if I am going to step in the ring, if it is going to be with Danny Dreamer, I don't have a problem jobbing to him. 
But if a storyline is going to be done, it needs to be done in the right way. The problem with that scenario was Danny Dreamer was uh, getting mad. He was uh, taking things personal that was said on a videotape that HWF had made. It was an HWF farewell videotape that was made last year. There, were, uh, there was a parody of him and Massacre on that video. He didn't like it one bit. He uh, took it too personal, and he wanted to fire back and respond by beating me down on camera in front of the ring, despite the fact that it happened over a year ago. I wasn't big on the idea of putting over a few that I gave them an opportunity at the time that it had happened to go ahead and do just what he wanted to do, and he didn't take me up on that offer at the time, and I thought, no, a year later, it's too late. Now, what's your opinion on Kurt Egos that have ran wild in the MMA? Well, uh, I think a wrestling an ego could be a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, if you're a wrestler just starting out in a professional federation and you have an ego but you have the the sack to back it up, then I think that um, that you're doing you know you do a great job. However, I think that if you have an ego and no reason whatsoever to have an ego about, then you're not going to go very far at all. Um, I don't think that the the ego is running rampant in a, in a any federation is going to help it out at all. You're going to get fighting, you're going to get bickering, and although you're going to have it no matter whether you like it or not, I, it, it needs to be discouraged. You always have to do what the booker says. The booker should always have the last say so, and he should be the only ego that you have in a wrestling federation. We noticed somewhat of a build up with the natural Roger Lee from feuding with Night Stalker to the famous three stages of hell and now he's got one big one-on-one -on -one match against the OC Champion Massacre for the World's Heavyweight title. Could you give us some detail about this upcoming event? Uh, we have built it up. As a matter of fact, last night I was an OW, at an OWA event where we were building this uh, very match up. Uh, these are two veterans, the natural Roger Lee and Massacre, who was one of the forefathers of not only OC but HWF2. He, he's been there since the very beginning. I think this is, should be recognized as um, one of our greatest title matches that's going to take place of, of all time. I'm looking forward. I'm hoping that everybody else is looking forward to seeing this. And I, I really do think that Massacre and Roger Lee will deliver in this matchup. Now it seems like something will be making the impact for the streets of Hamilton. Could you share with us what this might be? Well, I would like to hope that... that What's going to make the impact on the streets of Hamilton is going to be um, me being getting the opportunity to uh, work with each and every single Backyard Wrestling Federation. Right now, Backyard Wrestling is going is taking a downfall terribly. Wrestling in general is taking a downfall. I don't want to see that happen. I passionately love this sport. I've loved it for a number of years now. I don't want to see it go down. I don't want to see people lose interest. And I believe that not only I, but the CWO owner, the KWA owner, and even the OWA owner, and whoever else who would want to form an alliance and join together, if we would do just that, then we would be able to turn many people. We would be able to bring in new fans into the business. We would be able to, uh, to do things that we have never been able to pull off before. But, you know, just like you said earlier, the, the egos do not, they're, they're not going to cut it. The egos are not going to help anyone get anywhere. And by having one, you're only hurting yourself. Um, it's my dream to see each and every federation, as I said, to, to join up in Hamilton, to do shows just like the Universal Class show was done. Um, I want to see, uh, I want to see... I want to see success. I want to see success in backyard wrestling. I think backyard wrestling has something to offer that professional wrestling doesn't have. And if we can just get along, I'm asking for nothing else but to get along and do shows together, then not only the CWO's top guys, but the HWF and OWA's top guys will also be put over just like their bookers want them to be. Um, that is uh, definitely my goal. Well, I'd like to thank you for coming here to talk with us. It's a pleasure having you. It's no uh, problem, my is there any last comments you'd like to share before we go? Um, well, I wouldn't be the king of corruption if I didn't end an interview and a promo by saying, prepare yourself.